Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today, including, including Kevin BX, is standing by, sponsored by Basant Motors. Get to Basant Motors, where the spring rides are ready to roll. Right now, pay no GST and, and or get free, probably, or get free gas for a year. Put winter in the rearview mirror. Learn more at B-A-S-A-N-T Motors, BasantMotors.com. Uh, Joined now by Hockey Night in Canada's Kevin Bieksa, former Canucks, spent 10 years with the Canucks, and also spent time, of course, with the Anaheim Ducks. Kevin, thanks so much for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I got sucked into doing this one because I had to open my mouth yesterday when Rick was talking with Elliot. <laughs> Perfect. We'll take what we can get, Kevin. We'll, ta we'll take what we can Thank get. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, this is the first time we've had we, first time we've had you on the show. So, if you don't mind, just want to talk a little bit no. about uh, about your about yourself. Uh, uh, how do you explain your? And I'm I'm blowing smoke here. How do you explain your easy transition into television? Smooth as can be. Well, I don't believe this is the first time I've ever been on your show. That's got to be a lie, right? <laughs> well, I think this version of the show. Keep in mind, Kevin, both Rick and I have been laid off about 40 times. 500 times, right? <laughs> so this is the first okay. time on check. So, so, yeah. Now you're starting to sound like John Garrett. <laughs> 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 Uh, to answer your question, um, uh, no, it's interesting because I was, I was doing a podcast. I don't do any pods anymore, but I did John Scott's because it's a fighting podcast. And I just felt like talking about fighting one day. And he asked me, like, how did you get in with Hockey Night in Canada? Did you, like, give him your resume or was there a tryout or interview process? And I actually had to think about it because it's been, like, four or five years now. Hmm. And, like, the way it kind of worked was I was kind of at that gap year where I was still – like training and I went to the Spengler cup and I was still kind of fielding offers from teams and some European teams. And I did a, a game with Scott Oak, LA Edmonton in LA where I was just doing in between uh, hits with Scott. I did after hours again for like the seventh time. And then I started my podcast with Kess and we all know that that lasted about 13 episodes. And then I did the trade deadline and a couple all-star games. And next thing you know, it just kind of uh, merged into the studio and, it's kind of how it happened and then next thing you know and you know i'm on the panel and i'm just trying to be myself that's that's kind of at the end of the day what i'm trying to do i think everyone who knows me knows the version you see on tv is exactly who i'm actually more more of a smart ass in person believe it or not mm -hmm. so that's kind of what i've been doing but that's the hardest thing to do in broadcasting I mean, look at rick he's been around for years and he still hasn't figured it out <laughs> how hard is it do you think uh for for you uh, to to be yourself because some people haven't figured that out after years well that's why his show is 11 o'clock on a monday morning when everybody's <laughs> yeah. at work and not listening right so <laughs> yeah i'm right there with him no I mean, I, it comes with just over time. I think throughout my career, I came in as a, a young rookie, and I was I, I found myself. I thought I was a good rookie. I was quiet. Me, Rippin, and Burroughs. We're we're all pretty quiet guys coming into our rookie season, and we just kind of waited for our time. And and then after a while, you get more comfortable being yourself. And certainly, like all my interviews over the years with Dan Murphy and and Shorty and mm -hmm. Joey Kenward and all these guys in, in Vancouver kind of uh you know help ease me a little bit and i was very comfortable just saying well i mean i could tell you whatever i want At the end of the day i just don't care so i'm just myself that's the key kevin uh, november yeah. 3rd uh, you retired as a canuck uh, we haven't talked to you since that day signing a one-day contract i loved your culture speech in the dressing room it's been a tough time in uh, vancouver the last 10 years you were here for the last really good time and, and culture was a big part of why you guys were so successful can you talk a little bit about that speech you gave the guys because i thought it was incredible that day yeah, well, first thing is very appreciative to the organization. Like, I was looking at pictures on my phone the other day of, of that retirement weekend, and it was such an amazing experience. And, and when my dad originally, I think you know the story, when my dad pitched it to me like three years ago, I kind of wasn't on board. I'm like, Dad, I don't, I don't need this attention. I don't, I don't want it, to be honest. And he was trying, you know, he's like, no, it's, it's not just for you. It's for your family and your friends that have supported you your whole career. It's for the fans. It, it's for the organization just to give closure. And boy, was he right. Like it was, it was such a great weekend and I'm not an emotional guy at all, but like it, it felt so good. Like seeing all my family fly out and 
a lot of my best friends were there as well. All the people of Vancouver, like the players that I still knew in the dressing room, the organization just, uh, I don't think I really deserved that, that night, but it was amazing. But they asked me, you know, Alex Mitchell was big or Alex Oxingham. Now that she changed her name. Uh, she was kind of the one that we were, I mean, her and I were in communication the whole time. And she kind of asked me, are you willing to say something to the guys in the room before pregame skate? Cause we weren't sure if I was going to take the skate or I was just going to hang around we're waiting for some clearance from the NHL. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll say a few words. I didn't know it was going to be videotaped the whole organization wow. in there and, and go viral. So that was honestly meant uh, for us, for just the team. That was meant just for their ears and just to kind of help them at the time of the season they were at. Kevin, you've watched the Canucks play uh, this year. Uh, help us out here. Do you see them uh, making the playoffs soon or how far are they in your eyes? Well, they, they ended the season amazing yeah. obviously yep. and and but we, we all know we watched the oilers for years that were out of the playoffs by christmas and then they'd have a good second half when they had you know the young nugent hopkins and taylor hall and, and those kind of teams that they had so i mean it starts all over fresh in the off season but i think talk it's been really good for them and adam foot and gonchar these guys have been really good for them because they're all ex-players and they're all like tough gritty take no shortcuts kind of guys like certainly they were when they played so i i just like like i'm all about habits obviously i just like the habits and the way that guys competed down the stretch and the wins and everything were nice and let's be honest having demko healthy was pretty nice as well for the team and have him back at his game but they'll have to start all over fresh the games at the beginning of next season will be a lot harder to win than the games were down the stretch for the canucks but there's certainly uh the culture's kind of changed and Again, like my culture speech, like that worked for, for my group and for the people and the personalities yeah. in, in my dressing room. That's not necessarily going to be exactly the way this team's culture is going to be moving forward. It's going to be like a general kind of similarity, but they have to kind of develop their own because their leaders are different, right? Patterson and Quinn Hughes are a lot different than me and Ryan Kessler. Like, yeah. let, let's be honest, like those are different personalities. So they're going to kind of form their own leadership style and then they're going to hopefully run with that. How often do you think of 2011? Not a whole lot. Like, uh, you know, at the studio, we, we like to, I always tell everyone, Amber and Elliot and Ron, like, you can't hurt my feelings. And so they try to throw digs at me, and the 2011 <laughs> thing always comes back. Like, I couldn't just win one more game, eh, Kev? And, <laughs> and all those troops come back. And it, it honestly never, it doesn't bug me. Like, yeah, would I have wanted to win that game seven? A hundred percent. Do I sit up at night crying about it and having nightmares? No, I don't because it was like like the winning that game would have been obviously summiting Everest, but the climb to the top w was amazing. Like the whole playoff run, the season, uh, the fans, like all of our games that we had at home ice during the playoffs was such an amazing experience. So I wouldn't I wouldn't have traded that for anything. Speaking of the playoffs and something you did every once in a while, Kevin, I don't have the stats in front of me, but uh, it seems as though fighting is up in the playoffs so far. Any particular reason why? Um, I don't know. Like, that's a good question. I, I think it kind of spiked a little bit towards the end of the season, too. It just, when the games get more intense and there's more on the line, it just seems like there's less thought and it's just pushing, shoving. Next thing you know, fighting like there hasn't really been in the playoffs any square offs like any talking before the whistle and square off all all the fighting has been in the middle of scrums in the middle of goal mouth scrums or like a hit in the corner all reactionary things and and it's a bit of a copycat league so maybe yeah. you look at tampa yeah. bay who's been to the last three finals and one of the most successful teams of this decade and those guys have each other's backs no matter stand close is picking fights because point gets hit into the boards like Monkey see, monkey do, yeah. and that works for them, and I think a lot of teams are following suit. Um, uh, a lot of people saying that maybe the best thing that could have happened to Boston was getting blown out by uh, Florida in, in game two, a little dose of uh, reality. Uh, Kevin, can any team knock off the Bruins? Uh, yes. I, I, I think they, especially if Bergeron and Krejci are going to be right. out, I think, yes. And, and Olmark, Olmark's been, there's been something nagging him for the first three games, because every game we talk about how he's a game time decision and we kind of mentioned Swayman, not that Swayman's not a great goalie as well, but um, the Bruins, they're good though. They're, they're really good. They're really deep. They're structured. They're everything that you want in the team. 
Uh, but, it, I mean, the East is the East. Who, who are they going to play next round? They're going to play Toronto or Tampa. You know, who are they going to play after that? Carolina or the Rangers, in, in my opinion. Like, there's, they got two hard series ahead of them, and who knows. Uh, but I think they're, they're beatable. Kevin, the officiating, it seems like every day somebody's ripping them. What are your thoughts on the officiating in the playoffs so far? I'm not a big officiating guy. Like, I, I just, I don't like complaining about them all the time because, you know, what's, what's the alternative? What's the option? H- have no referees on the ice? You know, let the, let the honor system go and call your own penalties? Like, it, it, is, it is what it is. There's obviously some inconsistencies, but w- when I did a referee summit in Toronto years ago with a bunch of general managers and players and, and coaches and everything, uh, one of the referees, the lead referee said, listen, like our team of referees are like a hockey team. We have like our first liners, our second liners, our third liners, our fourth liners. So there's obviously referees that are third, fourth liners. Not a lot of them are getting games in the playoffs, but you know, like some of this one tandem in particular, I'm not going to tell you who, but they've been at the center of a lot of this, uh, you know, a lot of the controversy they're third, for, third, fourth liners, in my opinion, these two guys. So, like, sometimes you're going to get some of those types of calls that they miss, and then they call something else. It's, it's an inconsistency, but that's why the Cup is so hard to win because the, the referees is definitely a factor in, you know, getting through and getting power plays and getting calls. This has been great, Kevin. So next time we get laid off, when we get laid off from this show, we'll have you on our next show, okay? <laughs> that's a promise. You can look forward to that, all right? Okay, I think I'll keep my mouth shut next time Elliot's chirping with Rick and the, <laughs> making excuses. <laughs> no, but I, I, it was fun, guys. I always like coming on the Vancouver shows because you guys are obviously my people, so uh, we'll do it again. Uh, Kevin, uh, just one final thing. Uh, you should be in the Ring of Honor, a uh, huge part of the Canucks when you played, uh, just an absolute uh, big part of Vancouver you were, so uh, thanks for doing this. Okay, awesome, guys. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> thanks, Kevin.